Guys, you've been lied to. They told you that you have to wait until retirement before you can start traveling the world, enjoying your life. Well, you know what? Forget that, because you can start doing that now. You can do that right now whilst you're young, in your 20s, and you can actually enjoy your life. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built a life of freedom, traveling around the world, and making serious money doing so. There's no corporate grind, there's no wasting time. So if you're ready to ditch the nine to five, if you're sick and tired of your boss, if you know that you are destined for something bigger than what you are currently doing right now, stick around because I'm gonna give you the blueprint to doing just that. So guys, before we get started, let me be the very first to say that this video isn't gonna teach you how to be a typical digital nomad where you work for someone else and you just get paid a normal salary and you live in hostels and you live on a budget and things like that. That's not what this video or my channel is about. It's about earning a good amount of money while you explore the world so that you can live in the places you wanna live and experience the things that you wanna experience. It's all right when you're young to go backpacking and all that kind of stuff, but you know, I did that. I didn't really like it that much. I wanted to go and live in different countries and actually experience it as someone with a bit of money. And so I went out and I learned how to do that. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video, okay? It's also about going to these places and meeting ambitious, like-minded people who are also on a mission, who are also building a business or who are doing good for the world. You're not gonna meet those people living in hostels and things like that. If you go and live in hostels and you live on a budget, you're gonna meet people that aren't really doing much of their life, let's be honest. Again, nothing against it, but if you're looking for something with a little bit more oomph, like you can actually go and enjoy it, this is a video for you. It's also about personal growth. A lot of people stay in their own city, neighborhood, suburb, in their own like way of living, literally forever, their own environment. So they go to school in the same place, grow up, get married in the same place, buy a house in the same place, and they don't really experience anywhere else. They go on holiday, on vacation, in a touristy spot, and they enjoy life a little bit like that, but they don't really grow as a person. They basically stay as a kid. Now the difference between someone who does that and someone else who goes and travels and experiences new cultures and new ways of being and all that kind of stuff, is that you gain way more independence. Obviously you gain way more freedom, but you become way more mature and you just grow as a person because there's just character development that comes out of traveling and living in different places. And you're not gonna be able to do any of that if you don't learn how to make money online. And you get to expand your world view. You'll realize when you travel around the world that everything you've been taught about different places or about your own country, is not necessarily true. When I went to school, when I was growing up, everyone said, or everyone taught me at least that you know, the best healthcare and the best opportunities are in Western countries, in Australia, which is where I went to school, or in the UK, which is where I went to school as well. I lived in two different countries, right? Everyone used to say, everything is good in these countries. The healthcare is great, the opportunities are great, the job market's great, et cetera, the property, et cetera. You know, you can make the most amount of money in these countries. It's not actually true anymore. I don't know if it was true back then, but it certainly isn't now. You can make money on the internet, you can live in these other countries, you can have a way better quality of life. You'll realize that the healthcare is great in a lot of other countries. Thailand, for example, has great healthcare. Philippines has pretty good healthcare. If you want to go to the doctor in America or even in Australia, because that's from my experience, you have to wait around for a while. If they refer you to someone else, you've got to go the next day or if you, you have to book an appointment or something and it just takes a lot of time. I went to the doctor here in Vietnam recently and it was so quick. They went for everything. They did all the checks, did all the tests. I found out more information about myself from doing these tests and checks in Vietnam than I ever did in Australia, because in Australia, it was just such a big process to do these tests that they just didn't do it and it was just too much hassle. Um, but I did it in Vietnam within like a day and then I got my results and it was like, wow, I can't believe I didn't do this in Australia. So just so you know, when you travel around the world, it's gonna totally open up your worldview and everything that you currently believe is gonna completely change. So now that we got that out of the way, how can you actually do it? It all comes down to thinking like a business owner. You need to take charge of your money and the amount of money that you're earning. And then once you've got the money, you need to be in control of it. You need to use it in ways that's gonna help you grow. Either invest it back into yourself and into your business, or use it smart so that it will grow. So invest it into other things that, you know, like real estate or visas, residencies, citizenships, things like that. And you're gonna be setting up systems that make more money for you. So when you work for someone, you're trading your time for money. Whereas if you work for yourself, you trade your money for time. So a quick example, when I was working in sales for my boss back in the day, I was going to work every day into the office and I was messaging people, I was DMing people, I was cold calling people, I was sending emails and I was just doing that myself, right? And it was up to me to speak to my boss and say, hey, we need to maybe use this software, we've got to use that one, it's going to save time, et cetera, et cetera. And I had to almost like sell them on the idea of someone else's software that's going to save me time or going to add more value into the organization. And I was always trying to sell 
that idea to them. Whereas if you just work for yourself, you can just implement those things for yourself. So you can automate DMs or you can hire someone else to do the DMs for you. You can automate a lot of the processes around bringing in money that you can save a heap of time and then invest that time into much bigger picture things. But you're not going to be able to do that if you're not already organizing your time. You need to know what you're doing on a daily basis. Audit your time. So tomorrow, what I want you to do is take a pen and paper and then just write down every hour what you did that day. So at the end of the day, you're going to have maybe eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours of, you know, things that you've done. And you'll be able to audit your day and your time so that you know if you're wasting it or not. And I guarantee you, you're probably wasting a lot of hours in your day just doing nonsense. Most of the time, people that do this exercise, they don't even keep it up for the day because it's so hard to track your time properly. So this is an immediate indicator that that is something that you need to work on. Set up a Google Calendar, use it religiously, check it in the morning, organize your day the night before and keep everything structured and organized. If you don't organize your time, there's no way that you're going to be able to spend money to get more time back. Time is far more valuable than money. If you can spend money to save time, it's always going to be the better deal. So you're only going to be able to do that if you know how to organize your time. So set up a Google Calendar, learn how to use it. And all of this is about being a leader. So you have to be a leader for everyone else, of course, but most importantly for yourself, because you're going to have to be solving your own problems. You can't rely on other people to be solving problems for you. So if you're not making enough money, you have to figure out ways to make more money. If you're not landing enough meetings, you have to figure out ways to land more meetings. You have to take control of your time. You have to take control of your life. You have to take control of solving the problems that are constantly going to be popping up around you. If something is broken, you need to fix it. If you know that you need to do something, but you don't have the skill to do it, you have to figure out a way to educate yourself so that you can learn how to do it. I've spent a lot of money on education. I buy courses buy books, constantly learning. Even today, this is a never ending process. But you have to be the leader of your own life and you have to solve problems. The only way that you're going to advance to the level that you want to be at is by taking leadership and solving a lot of small problems throughout your life. So now that that's out of the way, what is the best way to actually make money travel around the world? It's through high ticket appointment setting and sales. It's by far the easiest thing to start off with because you don't have to build a business around it. And if you want to work for yourself, it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is go to businesses who sell high ticket products and services and you tell them that you want to connect them with people that want to buy their products and services. There's no way that these people are going to say no. And if you bring them deals, they're going to pay you a percentage of the deal size, hands down. There's no reason why they wouldn't. It's an absolute no brainer. You know, if someone came to me and said, hey, Jordan, I want to link you up with a few people who I know can buy your products and services. Would you give me a percentage of the deal size? I'd say yes, for sure. Bring them over to me. I have no problem doing that. So all this is about is making money by connecting people together. It's pretty much like helping people with their referrals. So you don't need to be a business owner to do this. You can work for yourself. You can partner with multiple companies. You can pick high paying industries that have a high ticket product or service. And then you earn commissions on the big deals. You don't have to even do the selling. You can ascend to doing that. Like you can level up your skill set and your education and your experience so that you can sell on behalf of those companies. But, you know, if it was my case, I would have absolutely no problem just paying someone a percentage of the deal size or a referral fee for bringing me the deal. And a lot of other companies would do the same thing. And you can do this in any industry. So if you pick an industry or a type of company or you partner with a few companies or you go and get a job just doing this, you can move to another job or you can pick another industry or you can work with different companies or, you know, eventually you can create your own products and service. And if you get good at selling high ticket stuff and your product or service doesn't sell, you make a new one and maybe that one's going to sell. So it's a, it's a skill that is never going to go away. Like it's only going to enhance your life. It's only going to allow you to make money. There's no negative to learning how to do this. And it all comes down to picking a lucrative niche. So you want to choose an industry where companies need help getting clients. Here's the secret. Most companies need help getting clients, but you want to make sure you choose the companies that have a high ticket product or service. So tech is a big one, you know, like software. Real estate's also good as well, consulting. There's a bunch of other industries. All you have to do is go on LinkedIn and you can get an entire list of those industries and you can just pick and choose. Maybe you've got experience in these industries already. That's always a bonus. If you have an interest or a passion in those industries, that's also good as well. That's how I would select the industries personally. Don't go for ones that you think are the best ones to go for because there's a heap of money in it, like software, for example, because everyone goes for software. Software companies typically have armies of SDRs doing this already for them. So it's not necessarily a big need for them. And it's very competitive. So you can go for industries 
that don't have a lot of people sending DMs on their behalf and things like that, you're going to have a much easier time, to be perfectly honest with you. Focus on industries with large deal sizes. For example, if you work with IT service providers, they'll typically sell a service for 5K a month on a three-year contract. So what's that? 5K a month times 36. That's a 180K deal that you could take a percentage of. You're able to bring 180K deals to IT service providers. How much money do you think they're going to pay you for that deal? Pretty good amount of money, right? The thing is, you're not going to be able to do any of this if you don't know how to target decision makers. So the way that I do that is by setting up meetings on LinkedIn. You need to be able to learn how to DM someone or email someone or call someone or reach out to your own personal network and get them booking in a meeting with the companies that you're partnering with. This is much easier than you might think because all you're really doing is figuring out what kind of pain these people have and then just introducing them to a solution that will solve that pain. Really as straightforward as that. You don't have to sell anything directly, you just have to get the meeting. So for example, if you partner with my company, all you need to do is land a meeting for us. Once we sell it, you get a percentage of the deal size. You only have to work a few hours a day. You don't have to spend hours and hours of your time DMing people, cold calling or anything like that. In fact, you don't have to cold call unless you really like to do it. Figure out what works best for you. If you're a people connector already, then it's going to be really easy for you to do this. You can even just ask people you know if they know other people. And this is great for both extroverted and introverted people. When I was growing up, I was always quite introverted, or at least that's what I thought. Um, but I was always quite good with people because I was a listener. And sales is actually really good if you're a listener. So I excelled in sales throughout my career because I just knew how to ask good questions. And I would listen to people and understand what problems or challenges they were experiencing. And then I would just try and link the solution that we have or that I'm selling to solving that pain. And if I couldn't, I'll be honest with them as well. Don't just try and sell something to people just for the sake of it. Extroverted people are... You know, the other side of the coin, you're good talkers. You can really educate someone on the product or service. You can probably create a lot of content around it and things like that. So play to your strengths. It doesn't matter if you're an introvert or an extrovert. Uh, this is going to be a really lucrative career choice for you. Now, for some of the younger people, networking and social skills is probably going to be your biggest challenge. I would say that my generation is probably one of the last generations that developed any social skills and networking because when I was growing up, we didn't have a lot of social media until, you know, I was in high school. So don't get me wrong, people my age still have uh, pretty bad social skills and networking skills because they don't fine tune them. If you know what I mean, you've always got to keep it going. It's like going to the gym. You've got to warm it up a lot and you've got to keep going. If you stop going to the gym, you know, you do have muscle memory, but you've got to get back into it after a while. It's the same with networking and social skills. So don't worry if you're younger or if you're older, you can build this up again if you used to have it or if you don't have any social skills, you can build it up. When I was in primary school, I had really bad social skills because I used to play computer games all the time. And then right into high school, I was doing the same thing. So I just locked myself in my room and played computer games. I wasn't going out and socializing. I didn't join a sports club or anything like that. And I just learned social skills by putting myself into positions where I had to speak to people. So I was going out to nightclubs and bars a lot, probably four or five nights a week. And I was just speaking to people, chatting up girls. And that's how I built my social skills up. I don't really mind sharing that with you guys because a lot of people just don't go and do it and then they end up not being able to get the opportunities that they want. Had I have not done that, I wouldn't be the person I am today. So if you don't have the social skills, go and get the social skills. If you've already got it, awesome. You're going to absolutely kill it in this role because good social skills allows you to network with people and then it's going to open those doors and new opportunities. Now that I've got the ability to network, especially in a nightlife situation without drinking, by the way, it means that I can meet pretty high level people because high level people like to go out to these bars and nightclubs and things. I can meet them. I can connect with them and then I can connect them to people and uh, bring deals in, right? Another way of doing it is just through LinkedIn. So you can direct message people directly on the platform. You can find out based on their position, who they are, and then you can reach out to them. And finally, one of the biggest things that I slacked on years ago was building a brand. I should have done this years ago. Pick a social media platform where you can build a brand. Pick one that you like. I probably should have done YouTube years ago, but I wasn't very good on video, so I just didn't do it. I focused mostly on LinkedIn because I could write, I could send DMs. Uh, but nowadays, I actually think I'm much more suited to YouTube, but I still use LinkedIn to connect to people and make those deals happen. So pick a social media platform, build a brand, one of those platforms, show that you're an authority, build trust with people, and the deals are going to be coming in. Just like clockwork, you won't have to put in so much work to reach out to people over time. The brand will actually bring in those deals. And then I realized that I could automate the whole sales process. So instead of going on LinkedIn and messaging people all the time, I could actually 
hire virtual assistants, or I could get software to do that for me. And I could put all that information into spreadsheets or CRM, and I could track the sales pipeline. So use a CRM, you can use HubSpot. Active Campaign is another one, you have to buy that. You can use things like ConvertKit. I mean, there's a lot of different ones. Right now I'm using ConvertKit as my email platform and HubSpot as like my sales pipeline tracker. I used to just use Active Campaign. You can just use a spreadsheet if you don't have any money or if you're just getting started, that's also fine. As long as you're putting all the information into a spreadsheet and you're tracking where the deal is. So are these people interested? How many times have you followed up? Have they booked a call yet, et cetera, right? So keep all of this in a spreadsheet if you don't have a CRM, but CRM is obviously better. I actually use both, so you can use them in tandem together. Set up booking links. So if you do speak to someone and they are interested in the solution that you wanna offer them, make sure you have a booking link so you can just get them booked in on your calendar and you can set up the meeting and you can speak to them. This way you don't have to go back and forth with times and things like that. Just get Calendly, get Schedule Once. I used to use Schedule Once, Calendly is free. Just use Calendly, get people booked in, have the meeting, speak to them about their problems, and then uh, you'll be able to introduce them to the right deal depending on who you're partnering with. And then you'll also be able to automate emails through that Calendly system, okay? So there's automated email reminders and things like that. But if you have a sales pipeline and you're tracking everything in your sheet, uh, then you can put those emails into an email marketing platform. That's why I use ConvertKit. And then you can put people through automations and sequences depending on what solution you think fits them best, right? So you can have different sequences for different solutions. And this way you don't have to be the one sending the emails all the time. It's just as easy as taking that email, dropping it into one of these automations, and it does the hard work for you. Now, as we get to the end of the video, if you want more details, if you want more information on like how the automations actually work, how to set that up, what kind of messages to send to people, how you can partner with companies, what to look for, what you should send people in order to get them to book meetings and all these other questions that you're probably gonna have after watching this video, then don't worry, because I've got a link in the description below this one, which you can get access to a free course, which will explain all of that for you, okay? So check it out, link in the description below. And then if you wanna work with me, you can choose to do that after going through the free course, all right? I don't want you to do anything until you check out the link in the description below. But if you've got any questions, comment below this video. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Like it, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.